So if this is new to you, we're going to cover a lot of fascial planes here. And if you've seen my webinars before, we're going to cover some new topics, including tensegrity and chi stagnation, prescribed movement, levels of fascia, point strategies, and how to embody the material. First, I want to show you the fascial lines here. So right here, we see what's called the superficial back line. And this is essentially equivalent to the bladder meridian and then center image we see the superficial front line which is similar to the stomach meridian and then on the right side we see the lateral line which is similar to the gallbladder meridian now when i first saw these images i was in a yoga retreat and i just kind of accepted it at face value and i didn't really dig into it for a little while after that because i thought well these are just the meridians and i didn't really take the time at first to understand this and how I could integrate it into those points. But then once I started digging into this and understanding how the fascia connect these muscles and form these fascial lines, and at that point, it really started to give me the breakthroughs that I'd been looking for for a lot of years. And it really started to answer a lot of the questions that I had. So one key question to ask yourself, and this is a question that I asked myself for a lot of years before I found this material is, if you do a group of points for any given condition, it can be neck pain or low back pain, or it can be an internal organ condition or any condition you can think of, any common thing that you see in clinic, any disease, any pattern. If you do your first group of points and they don't work, then what do you do after that? And that was a question I asked myself for a lot of years and I've done a lot of group acupuncture. And so doing that, it gave me the opportunity to just use a few points. So when I'm doing group acupuncture, I was typically using three to six needles. So I may do a group of points on the hand and then on the opposite foot or whatever combination it was. And this helped me to refine my point selections. But when you needle just using a few points, such as three points, and you don't get a result, then you can ask yourself, well, what should I do now? Should I needle a different meridian? What system do I needle? Or in this case, what fascial line should we look at needling? So for any given condition, you can apply this question, which is if you do your first group of points, then what do you do after that? And this is not always an easy question to answer. But what I've found is that by understanding these fascial lines and the way that different point groups work on different fascial lines, then it can help you to better make the point selections from the very beginning of the treatment, or if you're halfway through and the patient's not responding, then you'll have a better grasp of knowing what your secondary point group should be. Uh, this brings up an important point, and this is new material that I don't think I've shared before. And it's something that I like to refer as just don't overcommit to doing too many points in the beginning. So when I was doing TCM style acupuncture, like you do your pattern identification and you find that it's this pattern and then you do the points and maybe you use eight to 12 points or how many other points you use in treatment. And then you kind of hope the patient gets better. So when I say don't overcommit to using too many points, what I'm referring to then is Whenever you're treating a client, try just selecting one group of points that form a Dao Ma. So the Dao Ma is something that's really important to understand in acupuncture. And for my first few years of practice, I don't think I really fully understood how powerful the Dao Ma's were. So when you're treating your clients, what I encourage you to do is just start with three needles. And that might be on the same meridian, it might be a system one connection or a system two connection or a system three connection. But just start with one group of points to form a down wall, which are gonna be, if the points are on the hands or feet, you can do twos often enough, but you may do three. Or if you're needling the legs or the thighs or the arms, you're gonna to wanna to use three points. And if you look at Dalmas, you'll find that the points on the hand and feet usually come in a pair. So we're using two points on the hands or the feet. 
And then on the arms and the legs and the thighs, we're using three points in combination as a Dao Ma. Okay, so when you're treating your clients, determine what group of points to start with and then see what results you get. And if you get them out of pain and they're feeling better, then great. Then you don't necessarily need to do any more points. However, let's say you're treating a client and you're treating them for neck pain and you do the neckline points and they don't respond. Well, what are you going to do next? So if you don't overcommit to using too many points too quickly, then you can ask your client how they're doing and then you can think, well, okay, what fascial line or what meridian system should I go for next? So doing that, it'll help you to learn to use less points and it'll also help you to get better results. And then it will also help you to understand the different layers that these fascial lines work at. So for instance, this superficial back line, it's called the superficial back line, but there are muscles on the back that are on top of these paraspinals. So we can see the paraspinals and the erector spinae and these neck muscles here, but we need to remember that on top of these muscles in the upper back and neck area, we have the trapezius and then down in the low back area, we have the latissimus dorsi. So Understanding these fascial lines will help you to understand the various levels that points work at. And we'll get more into this as we progress through the webinar. And as I've said, this is something that I'm not quite sure that I've presented in some of the other webinars or these different levels. And when you understand the different levels that various points work at, then you're going to be better equipped to know what points to start with and what points to use if you don't get a result with your, four, with your first point selections. So this image in the middle is the superficial front line, which looks a lot like the stomach meridian, but we should also notice that the spleen meridian just above the knee in the spleen 10 area is also a part of this line. And then the gallbladder meridian is represented here and we refer to that as the lateral line. And we can see that it includes the splenius capitis muscle as well as the SCM and the intercostals. So we have this idea of the liver and the gallbladder connecting to the costal area. And here we see that the intercostal muscles are actually part of this lateral line that mirrors the gallbladder meridian. So as you study these, don't accept this for face value. I made the mistake of doing that for some time when I first learned about these lines. And it, um, it wasn't useful to just kind of brush it off as being equivalent to the meridians. And, and that's the mistake that I made for a little while in the beginning was just to look at the superficial back line and say, oh, that's the bladder meridian. I know all about that. But once you start digging into these muscle groups and understanding some of the principles that Tom Myers speaks of, such as tensegrity, then it'll help you to get better results and go deeper. So keep that in mind as you progress through this material. And you know, one thing that studying these fascial lines will do is it'll help you to greatly increase your understanding of anatomy as well and how these muscle groups work together.